It's one of the few molecules regularly named in daily headlines, lead stories, and public conversation. Plants emit some 2.1 billion tons of carbon dioxide a year. Carbon dioxide emissions will be reduced by the biggest producer of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, the higher for chemicals like carbon dioxide, leading cause of global warming. What's behind the headlines on carbon dioxide? Here's the inside story, really inside, down to the molecular level, as you'll see. To start, carbon dioxide, or CO2, is a gas, colorless, invisible at standard pressure and temperature. Under high pressure, CO2 can be compressed into a solid, known as dry ice, or dissolved in water, a process called carbonation. It's CO2 gas bubbles that put the pop in pop, or soda, depending on what part of the country you're from and being a gas can make you burp. <coughs> you can also see CO2, or at least its effects, when you make bread. Yeast eats the starch in the flour and expels <coughs> carbon dioxide <coughs> gas. CO2 gas expands when warm and makes the dough rise, the way helium gas expands a balloon. That's not the way most people relate carbon dioxide to warmth and warming. This is. The relationship of complex fluctuations in global temperatures, ice cover, and sea levels to this remarkably simple common molecule made of only three atoms. One atom of carbon, the C part of CO2, attached or bonded to two atoms of oxygen, the O2 part of CO2, in a linear structure. Great opportunity here to explain one of the fundamental rules in organic chemistry, the octet rule, or rule of eight a rule worth knowing because it applies to most elements in the periodic table, including the most common, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Okay, hit refresh here. Atoms have a center, a nucleus, and a certain number of electrons that orbit the nucleus in shells. Molecules are formed when atoms combine. Atoms of most elements tend to combine, so they each have eight electrons in their outermost shell. Carbon dioxide is a great example. A carbon atom has four electrons in its outer shell. It needs to connect with four more electrons to get the magic eight. An oxygen atom has six electrons in its outer shell. It needs to connect to two more to get to eight. What happens is a little like the card game Go Fish, atomic version. The atoms align in specific ways to trade or share electrons so they can get the electron sets of eight they need. Two oxygen atoms connect to opposite sides of one carbon atom, which gives each the two electrons it needs to make eight. See? The carbon atom in the middle gets two electrons from the oxygen atom on one side and two from the one on the other, for a total of eight in its outer or valence shell. Sharing of pairs of electrons is called covalent bonding. Now, back to the bigger picture, CO2 in our air and atmosphere, and in fact throughout deep space, in ice form, part of the makeup of planets. NASA rovers found CO2 ice caps on Mars. Earth's surface is much warmer than space, so most of the CO2 on Earth is present as an atmospheric gas. Carbon dioxide makes up less than half of 1% of the air we breathe. Air is mostly nitrogen and oxygen. Eruptions of volcanoes, like the one in Iceland called, uh, like the one in Iceland, add CO2 to the atmosphere. And of course, so does the carbon or life cycle. Plants take in CO2, along with sunlight and water, and give out oxygen. Animals and humans take in oxygen and give out CO2. And then there's this, the burning of fossil fuels in power plants, automobiles, and factories. Oil, gasoline, coal, carbon-based fuels. In fact, the word carbon comes from the Latin word for coal. As more of these fuels and organic matter like wood and crop stalks are burned by the planet's growing population and industry, all this additional carbon does exactly what you've just seen. It bonds with oxygen in the air. Air is 20% oxygen and makes, yes, more carbon dioxide. Where does it all go? An estimated 57% of this cook-fire, tailpipe, smokestack carbon dioxide is cycled into the oceans, covering 70% of the Earth's surface. Plants eat up some, most of the rest goes into the air. In the oceans and the air, 
more CO2 is causing serious problems. In the oceans? Well, quick rewind to making carbonated drinks. Remember, by dissolving CO2 into H2O, that, logically enough, makes H2CO3, also known as carbonic acid, a weak acid, although strong enough to remove rust from chrome. OK, fast forward again. More CO2 in seawater, more carbonic acid, more acidification of the oceans. And in the air? Buildup of CO2 and other so-called greenhouse gases in the atmosphere acts like a marathoner's thin post-race blanket, holding essential body heat close to Earth's skin, keeping the average surface temperature at about 59 degrees. Without this trap, the warmth from the sun would escape back into space, and average temperature on Earth would be just below one degree Fahrenheit. But adding too many layers of CO2 can have the opposite effect, trap too much heat, enough to melt ice caps, raise ocean levels, raise ocean and air temperatures, contribute to global warming. There's much more to know about CO2 and carbon credits, carbon footprints, and carbon capture. Maybe think of this video as carbon capture of another kind.